Hi, everybody. My name is Caden. My name is Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And we are the Ahu of the Torah YouTube channel. We are very happy that you guys could join us today. Take a little bit of time off your day to hear what the Word of Yah says, because that is the most important thing you can do, is be in Yah's Word and listen to what His Torah has commanded for us to do. That is what's going to save your soul. And uh, if you are here listening to this, you should feel very good. You should feel very proud of yourself that you would take some time off to hear what the Creator's Word is, because most of the world is not going to do that. They will not humble themselves to listen to Yah's Word, and you have, and you have been a chosen one. You have been called by Yah. So uh, thank you guys for joining us, and we are going to be getting into the tour today. Absolutely. We thank you guys. We extend our little little tiny three-foot table to you guys. I um, hope you guys will sit down. Um, if you're drinking coffee, I guess you're drinking coffee. If you're drinking tea, well, I will tip my, uh, I will cheers because I'm drinking tea as well. And um, let's do this first. There's, I want to put a disclaimer up there. I know there's a lot of youngsters that will listen to this. Um, what chapter is this? Leviticus 15? 15. Leviticus 15 is probably not suitable for children. And so before we go any further into this, um, I have a bunch of boys here and everybody's, nobody wants to do this chapter today. And um, sorry about that. Let me get my airplane mode on here. And um, so let us, um, you know, let preface this. If, if you have young kids or something of the sort, you probably don't want to hear this. And, and so this is, one of these chapters, we will just try to work through ourselves and try to figure this stuff out. And um, the bottom line is we want to get to the bottom of Yah's laws is how we want to get them. We want to get them written on our hearts. We want them on our minds and our souls. And we all need to know this stuff, regardless of how, I'm not going to say cringy it feels or how embarrassed it may make us feel. We got to get through this kind of stuff. And so um, we are going to be uh, working through this with you guys. The first thing I want to do is I want to go through um, a uh, person here. Oh, I can't do it because I turned airplane mode on. I'm sorry. I got to turn this off. Airplane mode is off. Uh, off for NIV. Yeah. So let me do this real quick. And hopefully I don't have any more of the alerts come through. There we go. And so this is from Sayo Erased. I don't know who this is exactly, but um, she's he or she um, is a brother or sister, and we appreciate all the comments on this. Um, and this is something we didn't know the other day. And so when when people comment and give us like extracurricular information that we do or don't have, um, I'd like to go over this stuff. So first of all, it says, good day to you and your family. I have some info from you. Coney is an old English term for a small rabbit. A brace of conies are two rabbits. Okay, good. I personally have stopped eating shark because even though it has small scales that are so sharp, it will tear your skin off. Not all sharks do. They, of course, have fins. Um, catfish do not have scales. Do not eat it. And I didn't, I didn't know that because I've never fished for catfish before. But catfish are unclean animals. So we want to know everybody. Um, and so some sharks, it looks like they have scales um, and fins. I guess you could eat sharks. But some do not. All right, then they said, I thought Peter's dream meant that all people were to be taught about Yeshua. Am I correct? May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Yeah, much love, sis, or brother, whoever you are. Um, thank you so much for, for writing in. Yeah, Peter's dream, it was basically, it was, a, it was a breakdown of what Peter had known. Peter had known, and Peter grew up with a bunch of Jews. And the Jews of his time had gone to another set of books outside of the Torah and in outside of the Torah books is called the Talmud, which is a very evil set of doctrine. And when you read the Talmud, um, it has things like you cannot, like they classify anybody else who are not Jews as Goyim and the Goyim can be beaten, stolen from they all sorts of horrible, evil things you can do to them. But one of the things you weren't supposed to do to them is you weren't associate with them. You were not supposed to go around them. And so the entire thing about Peter's dream was that our, our creator was, was telling Peter that, hey, you can now go and you can, you can preach to these guys. You could talk to them about Messiah Yahushua. You can preach to them about, you know, all the stuff that you were not supposed to, um, you know, the, what they thought weren't supposed to do. But they, they only thought they weren't supposed to do that because they were in the Talmud um, versus the, the actual Torah, where the Torah is where you're supposed to love our neighbors, we're supposed to take care of those. And I mean, there's no, there's no lines of you are a very horrible person. Um, you're either a Gentile if you are out of covenant with our creator or you, you are Yah's people, which are your Yashrael, if you are in covenant. And so there's no such thing of that nature. All right, so let's break into our handy dandy um, split screen. Gentlemen, how are you guys today? Good. Everybody looking a little spunky today? Yeah. Are we better? 
Everyone's good. We had some comments about the bad fruit yesterday, and everybody, I guess it. it okay, it wasn't bad. It was right. like on the edge, and it I didn't mean, taste. It didn't taste as fresh. You know, it when you have fresh watermelon or something, it wasn't as fresh. It tasted. You know, it had a edge. funky taste to it. But at the end of the day, um, and this is what I told the gal. I, I, you know, I used to live in Babylon, and I used to be able to afford all sorts of food all the time. And right now, we find ourselves extremely uh, broke. And extremely, we, like we couldn't buy food even if we wanted to. And so when we have food and if we waste our food, then we have no nutrients. We can't just throw stuff like that away. So now I'm going to put this into airplane mode and get rid of that. So sorry about that. All right. So here we go. Leviticus 15. This is important stuff to talk about. Guys, we need, I need your maturity. Okay. And I need you guys. This is, this is stuff that this is dealing with men and is dealing with females. And so let's talk about this. Let's see if we can figure out, see if the Ruach knows about this. And so let's go. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe and to El Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, When any man has a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. Mine just says discharge. Yeah, when a man has a discharge from his flesh, his okay. discharge is unclean. Okay, so we got to figure out what a discharge is here. I would think blood, pus. Pus, maybe like if you pop a zit. You pop a zit. Okay, so if you pop a zit, are we unclean? I would think so because like it's like coming out of your the pus coming out of it's your like body. It's like a pus and things like that. It's like almost like an infection in your body. It's like uh, it's so, not supposed to be there, right? It was just. So if you have a scab and you guys pick the scab and you won't let the scab heal, I and mean, if it starts bleeding, yeah, or pussing out, that's probably a discharge. Okay. Yeah. So there's several kinds of discharge here. And, um, I guess, I guess there's a lot of places that we can bleed out of, or we can have issues out of. So this is the command. So if, if this has a running issue out of his flesh, so that just says out of his flesh. I mean, that would say anywhere out of his body. So if you get an ingrown toenail and it's pussing out, it probably unclean. so if you went into the temple with an ingrown toenail, would you be, would you be doing the right thing? I don't know. I mean, if it, if it wasn't pussing out, sure. But if you're like, plus it's draining out of your toe. Hold on. I'm just saying, if you were to go into the temple and you had an ingrown toenail that was pussing out. You should probably shouldn't be in the temple if you're unclean. Yeah, if you're, Yahuwah didn't want anything unclean. They, he wanted, like, perfectly clean people. Come to the in table. His, in, his, in his temple. He didn't want people that were unclean. Yeah, and so if you end up getting a mosquito bite and you itch your mosquito bite and you have a little bit of pus coming out of it, would you be unclean? Yes. Probably. Okay, all right. So it's probably probably good. All right, let's do, and uh, verse three. And this shall be his uncleanness and his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanness. Okay, so there's yet more right here. So that is basically saying, how did you, how would you stop the issue? Uh, it heals up, you like bandage it up. Yeah, if you bandage it up, you're going to stop the issue. You're going to stop this out. But, but it says you're unclean. So basically, I think y'all want you completely healed up. No festering sores if you want to do tabernacle work or go into the tabernacle and do this. All right. Every bed wherein he lies that has the issue is unclean. And everything whereon he sits shall be unclean. All right, so this is very interesting because we're going to get into this with women here shortly, but this is men. So it says right here, every bed wherein he lies that has the issue is unclean. So if it bleeds on the bed, he's the bed. If you unclean. bleed on the bed, it looks like your bed is unclean, right. which would make your spouse unclean as well, technically, right? Right. right. So here we, here we have that. And I mean, it's, it's something very interesting to know. And I mean, uh, clean sheets, I guess, are very important to you, or clean bedding. Right. Yeah. Puss out or bleed on the sheets, you gotta like clean that up. Yeah, like you're you're unclean. All right, and whosoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So this is yet even more. So if anybody touches the dude's bed and you haven't changed the sheets, then you're unclean. And I mean that could be I've bled on my sheets before. I've had like wounds or something of the sort, and I, I wake up and there's like little patches of blood or something. Um but that means my wife is unclean until the evening. And there's like a lot of infections that can come out of uh, pus and blood and things like that. You don't know. Yeah, and I think that's I think this is what it's doing is basically keeping us from infections. Yeah, you're always just trying to like keep us clean because I'm sure there wasn't a lot of uh, ways you could heal yourself once you got like disease back in the day. There wasn't a lot of cures to things that a man has made now. So he's like, you guys have to keep your eyes clean. You're all gonna end up with some crazy uh, bubonic plague. 
yeah, this is a world without big pharma. And so we didn't have the creams and lotions. And I'm sure they had natural stuff. I mean, I know Noah and Moshe had books of healing and things of that nature. But um, we didn't have the stuff we had back in the day for sure. All right. So that's very interesting. All right. So hold on. Are we, do we have commandments here? Um, other than uh, clean yourself with water, you'll be unclean till evening. But are there any commandments within this? I would say maybe yeah, you're unclean if you believe. Uh, I wouldn't say because there's nothing we can do other than wash ourselves. So if it's wash yourself after you're unclean, then that would be the command. But he's just saying you're unclean if you have a discharge. And we'll get in there. We'll get in, I think, a little later that people need, like, once they're unclean, they need to, like, separate themselves from the Kohen and stuff. Right. All right. Seven. And he that touches the flesh of him that has the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. All right, so he that touches the flesh of him that has the issue. So this is still dealing with other people touching either the bedding or touching the guy. And I guess that is as easy as it is to end up dead um, or end up with a, a leprosy or end up with whatever it is, a skin-crawling bacteria. Okay, eight. And if he that has the issue spit upon him that is cling, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. All right, so there's... I don't think this has so much to do with the uh, the guy having the discharge. It's more of uh, getting spit on just an unclean thing. Uh, no, this says yeah, the, guy the, the guy that has the issue. The guy that has it, right? But I think like, sure if be- anyone spits on you, you were unclean. Cause Is it? I think that's what it would be. If would you be in, would you be unclean if somebody spits on you? You don't know what's in their mouth. I you feel pretty unclean. You would feel <laughs> unclean, but I mean, there's, is, do we have any commands to say if somebody spits on you? Because this is dealing with a guy with an issue. Yeah, but where would his discharge, why would his discharge be that if he spits on you? Because if there's a diff- if he has a sickness in a different spot, why would if he spit on you, you'd be unclean? Uh, I do not know that, and that's a very good point. Um, his whole body, he's totally unclean. This guy's an infectious guy. He's unclean, right? You don't want to be so spit on. That comes out of him is unclean. First of all, we got to figure out why the guy just spit on you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you might like need what? to lay hands on this guy. I mean, hey. maybe it's when he's talking. Like, he talks like, you know, like, yeah, like, like say it, don't spray. Yeah, say it, don't spray it. Uh, I'll take a shower later, sir. All right. Um, nine. Okay. And what saddle soever he rides upon that has the issue shall be unclean. Okay. So we don't have saddles anymore. We car have seat. car seat. Yeah. <laughs> so if this dude has a, I mean, basically a person can make anything they touch and everything around them unclean, including people. It's very, very interesting. That goes back to, are there any commandments here? Or it's like, we almost need another set like of, of like, uh, I don't know if it's commandments, but it's like things we should do in the event of something like this. I mean, yeah, we, sh- we shouldn't do this. But, I mean, how would you... How Where would the command be? I mean, if, if some guy with his Somebody leprosy spits on you, there's nothing you could do. sore and you become unclean because you sat where he sat or something and you didn't know. Now yeah. you're unclean. Yeah, you're unclean, but you could also die from it. I mean, I, I mean, who knows what's what's going on here. There's a reason y'all put these here for us. Yeah, and, I mean, he knows. Y'all knows all about these diseases and infections and things like this, and so he knows how the body is susceptible to this. All right, 10... And whosoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean, even the even. And he that bears any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So mine says who is carrying them up has to wash his garments. Okay. So if he like, that makes sense. So if he's like so he's carrying, dying. Yeah, if he like takes the dude up or touches, carries his bed or touches anything of, of just, that sort. I was just probably saying that with like a dying animal. If you're a sick animal and you touch, you're probably the same thing. That what? What are you saying? You have to uh, be unclean until evening. A dying animal? Yeah, a dying animal. Say the animal's like sick and you touch its dying animal and you carry it somewhere. Would that be? I feel like, you, I feel like you'd be unclean as well because the animal's sick, so you would want to clean. You'd probably definitely want to cling, but I mean, it, what if it's just like a, a regular sickness? I mean, this is talking about a dude that is like festering out, right? He's like seeping out somewhere. And, uh, okay, so... Uh, I, I don't know. So where was it? Let's finish up that thought with that, Jade. Um, like a dead body. I, I Or uh, like a, uh, a sick thing. animal. I think if the animal had like a wound that was like festering out, Maybe. it would also be unclean. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that we know of that... Because we get cow poop on us all the time, right? Right. That's a normal thing. Yeah, it's a normal... It's, we kind of smell like cow poop here. Uh, it's unfortunate. Sorry. Um, it's just how it is. So I don't th- think there's any command about like feces or urinating, urine on you um, or something. Do we do we have the one about feces where he said uh, cover up yet? I think we've been through that already. I don't think we've had it yet. Cover up the feces? Yeah, if you like, they said take out again. Maybe not. You're definitely. It's not it's not pleasant by any means, but I don't know if it makes you unclean or not. All right, let's let's roll on. Eleven, 
And whosoever he touches that has the issue and has not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. All right, so what is this here? Whomsoever he touches that has the issue and has not rinsed his hands in water. Whoever he touches that has the issue. So, so basically, if he like just touches it with his hands or something and then go wash his hands, I think he's clean. But if he uh, doesn't wash his hands, he has to, like he basically became completely unclean and has to go wash his entire body. So what does this say? Any man, anyone? Let's see what the, the NIV says. Anyone, the man with a discharge touches without rinsing his hands with water. Must wash their clothes. Okay, so this is a dude who's like festering sores, and he doesn't wash his hands, but yet he touches. Somebody. Okay, so if it's if someone that's a dude that's sick that has a sore touches you, then you must go wash up, because yeah. he's got to wash his hands at all times too. And they bathe with water, and they be unclean until evening. Okay, all right, twelve. And the vessel of earth that he touches, which has the issue, shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. So that's interesting too, because this is like some festering discharge. Um, it's not blood; it's different. But it's it's the the earthen vessels seem like they uh, bring in a lot of plague, or something. The best way I can explain this is I think it's like what we're describing here, like the fly larvas. When you pop it out, a whole bunch of pus comes out when you pop the fly larva out with them. So I think that's what it's kind of referring to here. That would probably make us unclean. Definitely having the fly yeah. larva and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you'd have to take care of cows to actually know what that's like. But it's amazing. It's like a two and a half inch zit. When you blow it out, it blows. Pus and blood and the fly worm. Sometimes it hits you in the face. I got hit in the face. That was it's, pretty nasty. it's been hit in the face. I've been hit in the face with them before. It's yeah, so they, they, they pop out. It's yeah, they do pop out. When they pop, they pop. The it bigger really, ones it really makes you think your life other. decisions. It really makes you think well, what, what's really going on here. And sometimes it's not only the fly that hits you in the head. Sometimes the bull turns around and decides that's not yeah, he's not happy he's not, with this, he, and then he horns you. They really don't like it's it. Like, it's like popping a very painful zit. Yeah, it's I don't I think there's got to be better ways of doing it, but I don't know any other other than pop it out. So right. everyone around here does. Yep. All right. Let's see. Thirteen. Mm-hmm. And when he has an issue, or and when he that has an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing. Ah, seven. And wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean. All right, so where would this be? How would you be cleansed of this issue? So this thing basically stops. I would assume the priest would have to look at it like he did before when they do like the leprosy or whatever when he was looking at that. So I I think if you have a scab and the scab is solid and it's like a real scab and you don't pick it, I think you'll be clean. Yeah, Yeah, nothing's coming out of it. There's no discharge. I think this here is like like where they have like the leprosy where they're like looking at it and they're like, okay, you're unclean. Or an infection. I've had an ingrown fingernails before and they 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 get huge and they then you blow them out and there's pus everywhere so i would be completely unclean all right and on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves or two young pigeons and come before yahuwah unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and give them unto the priest um okay so that's i mean essentially so he, i can see this is kind of like a minor unclean thing because they're using they're, it's not the base isn't like a lamb it's a yeah, turtle dove it's like yeah. it's like just bring a turtle dove it's not that big of a thing yeah, and so I guess this is, I mean, more of like thanks to Yah for like clinging yeah. you, keeping you alive. I mean, okay. there's. Well, thanks for not letting it would the, grow pr- us would the priests eat me. the turtle doves? Uh, so they, they, had, they had to be clean animals to be on the altar. Yeah, they had to be clean animals. I don't know. I don't know if they do it. They're pretty small. Birds are super small. It's like yeah. a chicken nugget. It's a really small meal. Yeah, it'd be like a pigeon almost. I think a p- turtle doves the size of a pigeon. So when we kill the birds for our dogs, they're just either itty there's bitty not, tight. There's not a lot. There's not you much to get eat. get less than a handful of meat. You don't even get anything out of there. You got to like completely go crazy killing birds to ever feed the dogs. Yeah. All right, let's go on. Uh, make atonement for him before is 15? 14. 14. 14. 14 or 15? 15. No, I'm 15. Okay. And the priest shall offer them the one for a sin offering and the other for an ascending smoke offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before Yahuwah for his issue. So uh, being unclean is kind of, uh, they kind of see it as a sin. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's a more sin. Of a, you separate yourself from the people. You separate yourself from Yah because Yah wants clean people in his midst. And you have to like, when you become unclean, you have to separate yourself from Yah. It's almost a welcome back to the herd style yeah 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 it's it's a cer- it's like a ceremonial thing um yeah you're back in you're back in the club i guess all right and if any man's seed of copulation go out from him then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening um gentlemen i mean let's just stay 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 with me here, don't, here yeah i know uh, don't yeah. be mine's the other uh, stuff i don't think i should read it but. read it and when a man has a di- has a emission of semen, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and shall be unclean until evening. Okay, 
So there you go. Okay. So it's very easy to become unclean, right? right? The, the, the whole act of sex makes you unclean. Yep. Sorry, folks. We gave you the disclaimer. All right. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. So anything the semen touches is unclean. Okay. Anything. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. So what would this have you? I mean, this would basically tell you the priests would need to be abstinent, right? They, mm -hmm. they would need to be away from their women mm -hmm. and none of that because you would end up uncling and if you're uncling to the evening you're That's trying why to... That's why I think they took shifts, right? They took like, I think they each had their own set certain times where they would go in they were completely clean and where they would go see their families instead of their families. Teams. Right, and coming up with the, this thing with the women here, so this is going to be interesting because um, here we go. And if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be Put apart seven days, and whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the even. Okay, um, same kind of thing. I don't even I don't know how to describe this to you guys, but and I don't need to, other than women have blood. Right, and, and so you're not. So she's only unclean seven days. If you touch her, you're only unclean for one day for that till the evening. Right, but you're still unclean. And your mom and I and Nicole and <laughs> Nicole and I have talked about this, and we've tried to figure this stuff out before. But there is something about the, I, I would say it probably came from the curse of Eve, that women are, I mean, they're, they're, they're essentially, they bleed at such a time that they're very unclean that they're almost put into a uh, isolation, right? There's, there's an isolation. Not only are they, um, they're cycling and their, their bodies are like on fire and everything's going crazy, but um, they're supposed to be like put apart. So here it is. So she should be put apart seven days. That's, what does your guys say about being put apart? Yeah, she shall be, be in her time of separation. Okay, so I will, I will be the very first to admit this is probably the very hardest command that, I, that there's ever to follow. Number one, we weren't keeping Torah when we, well, we were keeping Torah when we built this house. I did not, I wasn't deep enough into this. Essentially, your mother should have a, a little house. And when she is cycling, she should go to her little house and um, she should be put apart seven days. Nicole's over there kind of smiling. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a hard chapter. Okay, so and so if you touch your mother while she's cycling, um, which also goes probably for food as well. Everything your mother touches, silverware, plates, any of that. The, I think yeah, we're gonna get to that uh, thing in a minute. If there's not a house of separation, then as a woman that's cycling, the entire house becomes unclean. Right, you probably have to clean that after. Yeah, you need to wash, and you're not you're not clean until even. All right, twenty. And everything that she lies upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sits upon shall be unclean. So that's everything, right? So right. I guess this isn't just the hardest command in the world for me to follow. But um, I, I don't know where to stick your mother. I had to stick her in a closet. Um, my bed becomes unclean. I, wife's laughing. Everybody that's out there like <gasps> gasping. I can't believe you just said that. Don't She's stick me in a closet. Oh, she says don't stick me in the closet. Yeah, she would. We actually talked about putting a bed in the closet and like and actually figuring out how to do this, um, but we have been unable to figure this out. Um, so it's it's not a good thing. We're all unclean. All right. And whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So that's I mean this is um this is a hard command to do right. I don't know where else I would sleep. We have ten pit bulls. I have no other bed. There's nowhere to actually go. Um, I just, I, this is a very hard, hard command. The, the hardest. I don't find any other commands anywhere that are, that are hard to, to follow. This is the one that unless you were set up right and you had like a little, um, I don't know, cabin or something outside the house or something where that you can put them. And, you know, it's for the best of the woman, right? As, as women and men, I know there's a lot of women and men out there, but men don't quite understand the entire cycle. They don't, they don't get the crabbiness and the way that the women feel. And all of a sudden a man's just chilling out and then he gets his head ripped off and you're like, uh, what's going on? And you know, it's taken me 24 years of marriage and the first 10 years of marriage, I had a really, really tough time with cycle time. I didn't get it. I just thought she hated my guts for like, you know, she's, they, they, they change, right? And it's, it's, you guys see it. We see it. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to discuss this, but in a right world, a woman would have a, a safe place to go that she didn't have to do the normal, I would say the normal duties that a, a woman would have to do. She can just 
be in pain and peace, I guess, is, is the way it, it, I see this. So, And all you guys out there, please, um, I know you guys will discuss this with me, so I, I look forward to the discussion of today. All right, let's do 22. And whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Okay, good enough. We got that. And if it be on her bed or on anything whereon she sits, when, she, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until even. So this is, I, 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 we're in this chapter, we're already going to go. This is talking about like physically touching the blood, I believe. Mine says something different. Let's do it. It says, and if her flow has stained her bed or anything on which she sat, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. Yeah, and th the boys won't understand this, but I think times have changed from the days of back in the days to the technology we have now. And so um, back in the days, I would say it's, it's, I'm sure today it's even okay to stain your bed. I mean, it's not okay, but I mean, it happens. But back in the day, it was probably far worse where they didn't have the modern technologies. I got all my boys are completely red. Jay, do you with me on this? Yeah, I know you're trying to. Okay. So, I got it. so this is like physically touching the, the blood. Yeah. You're in so sanitary items that women have today. They probably didn't have quite the sanitary items they did back then. Yes, I agree. Okay. So anyway, if we touch this. And we are um, unclean we, until evening. We're unclean until evening. We bathe themselves. Yeah, touch. So, and if he, and if it be on her bed or on anything whereon she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until even. So this is this is this is if you have. It doesn't matter. You're you're unclean. If you're in the same bed as your wife and she's cycling, you're unclean. If there's blood on the bed, you're unclean. Every you're still unclean, right? So this is still talking about the blood. It adds to it right everything that is there is unclean all right and if any man lie with her at all and her flowers be upon him he shall be unclean seven days and all the bed whereon he lies shall be unclean that's 24 impurity. right yeah impurities mine says and her monthly flow is on him yeah so this is a we got to go down this path there are no sexual relations with your wife during cycling, right? You stay away. You don't touch. You're not supposed to touch. And I guess, you know, it's a sad thing for women or something if you're, like, put away over there. But, you know, I, at the end of the day, it might Back be... Back in the day, it was probably normal. Yeah, well, they probably had a house, you know? It's like uh, Abraham probably had a house out in the back a or something. A separate for tent for Yeah. Them. Well, it's either you get your head bit off and you don't know why, or you put them at peace where they don't have to get angry and things of that nature. So... That's how I see it. And hopefully you women aren't hating me or hating our guts. This is just the way we're we're trying to explain this. And I don't know if it's all right, but we're trying. All right. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her unclean shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. So anytime you have a discharge, anytime you have spotting, anytime you have any of that, or the or your, your cycle doesn't end, and, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be any kind of graphic or anything like that, but after 2019, um, when the people looked at the snakes and the eyes and they, they took the snake bite, there's, that is, that is one of the major, major issues is, is bleeding. Some of them bleed, never stop bleeding and some of them have never bled again. So there's definitely a sterilization of the world that's going on right now. All right. 26. Every bed whereon she lies all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sits upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation. It's all unclean. And whosoever touches those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. But if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days and after that she shall be clean. All right. So... But if she's cleansed of her issue, so the cycle's over. Cycle's over. There's no more blood. So basically, she's unclean. A woman's unclean, from what I can see here, at least 14 days a month. That's what I was going to say. Um, because, she, because of the blood, when the blood ends, and we know life is in the blood, she's unclean seven days. So the question I would have, which I don't think is correct, she's unclean. If during those seven days, anything she touched, do they become unclean if the blood is stopped? No, because she's cleansed of her discharge. So nothing else would become unclean. But she's still unclean for those seven days. And it's somebody unclean day. isn't going to make... Or somebody unclean isn't going to make somebody cling unclean after this? I wouldn't think so. Because that, that, be, that would be a tremendously... That would be, you know, having a, a half of a month 
where you have to isolate your wife or she can't touch anything is, is, is that's pretty hardcore, but I'm not ever going to question Yah and you know, his ways are always right. So, all right, 29. And on the eighth day, she shall take unto her two turtles or two young pigeons and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. The sacrifice and the turtles again. It's the turtle doves. Turtle, oh yeah, it does say tur two turtles. Yeah, dang it, turtles. The sacrifice and the poor turtles again. Ah, uh, wasky turtles. Uh, and uh, of the assembly. 30. 30. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for an ascending smoke offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before Yahuwah for the issue of her uncleanness. So this is like a, uh, the priests are very busy. The turtle doves um, are going to be limited. I mean, they're going to always be on the chopping block. Yeah, they're going to be on the chopping block. Because there's going to be a lot of women and all women cycle. And so this is, I mean, there's going to be, I don't know, you need like more priests. I mean, no wonder they had a ton of priests. All right. Thus shall ye separate the children of Yashrael from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. Okay, so this leads us to something right here that is very important, right? Defiles my tabernacle. So this is where you would, this is the separation of Yah, right? This is where he, it's not like it's a bad thing to be unclean. It's just a bad thing if you're trying to go and, and talk to Yah or if you're trying to hang out with Yah and... Um, you know, it is a, uh, it's, we need to have clean hands, clean hearts, clean minds, clean souls, everything. Clean bodies as well. All right. This is the Torah of him that has an issue and of him whose seed goes from him and is defiled therewith. And of her that is sick of her flowers and of him that has an issue of the man and of the woman and of him that lies with her that is unclean. What does your guys say for a Mine flowers? says, monthly and for separation. who is sick in her monthly separation? Mine says impurity. Impurity. Why do they put flowers in this? Uh, is that saying sever? Yeah, sever. I think KJV said it too. Does it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It's sick of the, her flowers. Uh, I don't know. Flowers making people sick or something? Did I miss this something? This flower does. Did I, did I miss something? <laughs> I don't know. All right. So anyway, that is it. We made it through that, gentlemen. You didn't, you didn't start... Eli was the only one over there smirking the whole time, which is understandable. He's 15, so uh, we will try to uh, remain mature through all of this stuff. Guys, up to the up to the mics. Do you guys have anything else? Um, stay clean. Stay Wash yourselves. Stay clean. Yeah, stay clean. But at the same time, I mean, I don't know. Some Do we go through a day without being unclean? I probably don't. I have to deal with the cows all the time. So Yeah, deal with the cows. I think we're probably all clean, which leads me to you guys should probably shower and cling up a little more than normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we all do better we, either, so. Considering we all shower at the Daily. end of the day. So. Yeah, at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, that's it. All right, guys. Um, yeah, and these commands are here for a reason. They don't seem like too hard, you know? Like, they, they are I too hard. This is the safety, only one. Safety precautions. It's absolutely safety precautions. And, I mean, I, I get where Yah's going with all of this stuff. I just, I don't know how I, I built the house wrong or we did this wrong or something. So I can't stick mom out in the greenhouse. So I'm not sure where to it's put mom. a little mom. too hot in there. A little too hot in there. We'd have to get her some fans. But, you know, the thing, I think the thing was that you're supposed to make the women comfortable and make them so they're not having to deal with their normal daily routine um, while they're being afflicted. And men have zero, you, you guys have no idea the kind of pain and the kind of cycle stuff. I've, I've known women that it, it brings them to their knees. It, it, it's like, a, it's a horrible thing. The headaches and rages and everything. It's just, it's just very uncomfortable. So men, we got cursed with briars and thorns and... Right, cursed work in the field. We'll yeah, work it. the field. Yeah, we'll take that. Absolutely. Thank you, y'all. Woohoo! All right, so let's leave it at that. Uh, much love to everybody out there. Thank you, guys. Anyone have anything else? Uh, read your, read your Bibles. We will see you guys tomorrow for the youth for y'all, for the youth that are going to be there. We'll see you guys around, what is it, 6 p.m.? Sometime. We don't know what time it is it's because you guys are all under standard. Standard. It's standard time. It's the same time it always has been for the last uh, 14 weeks. So. All right. Yep. Thank you, guys. All Much right. love to everyone. Shalom. Shalom.